In this video, we're going to look at rational expressions, and we're really going to introduce them and look at the definition of rational expressions, and then we're going to look at how to find the domain of a rational expression. And so a rational expression is an expression written as the quotient of two polynomials. Remember, quotient just means we're dividing. So here's my first example over here on the left. If we, I'll call this example one. If we have a polynomial, now it's a small polynomial, but still a polynomial. If we have a polynomial over itself, that's the quotient of two polynomials. This would be considered a rational function. Our second example would be considered a rational function. It's a trinomial over a monomial. Even x by itself is considered a polynomial. So this is a rational expression, and then lastly, this is a rational expression. So just, just three little examples of what one might look like, separated with commas. So here's what, what, what we're looking at. So it says the domain of the rational expression is the set of real numbers for which the expression is defined. So what you gotta think of is when is an expression undefined, and that's when the denominator is zero, okay? So basically what we're gonna look at when we're finding the uh, domains of these rational expressions, we're gonna say, okay, the domain is gonna be all real numbers except whatever value of x makes the denominator zero, okay? So that's kind of what we're thinking in our head as we look at these examples. So I'm gonna look at this first example. It says find the domain of the given expression. We're not considering this like a function that we're graphing. We're not even there yet. I'm just figuring out, well, okay, so what values of x is this function defined, okay? And so I'm looking at it and I could maybe try to eyeball it and say, okay, what, what would make the denominator zero? And you're thinking, okay, well, um, you might be trying to do the math in your head, maybe a little bit more than two, but a little bit less than three. I need this to be a seven so that when I subtract seven, it's zero. But let's just use our um, algebraic algorithm. I wanna find out what makes the denominator zero. In other words, set your denominator equal to zero and solve for x. So I'm just gonna solve for x real quick. I'm gonna add seven to each side, and I'm gonna divide by three on each side and get seven thirds. That means that when x is seven thirds, be careful, this is not the domain. The domain is gonna be all real numbers with the exception that x does not equal 7 thirds, okay? Depending on whatever notation you wanna use for that. So what we just solve for is we solve for the value of x that the, the denominator cannot have, okay? This function is defined everywhere except 7 thirds. So now I just got two short examples, it's a short video. And I want you to try to do these two on your own. Try to find um, what the domain is for this expression and for this expression. Well, to start with the first one, we're looking at the denominator. Okay, it doesn't really matter what makes the numerator zero. That's okay. Um, the expression is undefined when the denominator is zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my denominator equal to zero. And this just looks like a little, uh, to solve this for x, we're gonna use our zero product property. If this value times this value is zero, the only way to get a product of zero would be if that's zero or if that was zero. So whenever I solve, I'm gonna add four to each side and I'm gonna add seven to each, or excuse me, subtract seven from each side. And so what we found is this. Our domain um, is all real numbers except we know that x cannot equal four and x cannot equal negative seven. I'll write that as two separate values. x cannot equal four and x cannot equal negative seven. That's what will be true of our domain. It's all real numbers except those. And now let's look at our last example here. For, here, for this one, what you're gonna have to do is we don't really do anything with the numerator, but you're gonna have to actually factor the denominator because if we're looking at this, um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find What values of x make this zero? We set the denominator equal to zero and solve. Because whatever x values that is, those are the values of x that this expression cannot have, for which it is undefined. And so if you were solving this, you can maybe use quadratic formula if you were good with quadratics or, or factor. I'm just going to factor it real quick. It looks like our factors are going to be x plus 5 and x minus 3. So what I've, what I've done is I've started, I'm just going to rewrite my rational expression with x plus 5 and x minus 3. So I've just taken that and rewritten it. And now, I'm gonna kind of separate these a little bit. And I'm gonna kind of come over here to the right a little bit and we're gonna say, okay, well, if I set my denominator equal to zero and solve, 
We can solve this just like the last problem. We know that x cannot equal negative 5 and x cannot equal positive 3. Okay? I would set that equal to 0 and solve, and I would set that equal to 0 and solve. Um, and basically that's how you find the domain of a rational expression.